If you haven't yet, please go watch my other video explaining what a timeline system is and how to use it. Today's video is all about and only about setting it up on Evernote. Okay, let's get started. On Evernote, the containers are the notebooks. And I know what type of container they are. Of course, I know because it's my system, but I know what type of container they are, mostly because where the containers, where the notebooks are. But before that, let's take a look at some of the containers I have here. For example, we have here Creator, which is a container about creating videos, articles. So this is an action container. Then we have Collaborations, again, another action container. It's all about my interactions with companies. Then here is an example of a static container, knowledge base, all the information I collect, everything I learn is here. I mostly use this container to look for information. The same is true here for the family notebook, which is where I keep all the family documents. And by the way, if you are new here, this doesn't look like a real account because it's not my real account. It's my second account is the one I use to record the videos. And finally, we have here a notebook, which is the timeline. This notebook is set as my default notebook. To set a notebook as a default notebook, you can click here on the three dollars, let's choose this one here, and set this as the default notebook. Here it is, because this is not. If I set this one, it now has a star. So my default notebook is the timeline. So let's set this back to the default notebook. Now, we are using the shortcuts space to add the action containers. Okay, so let's start doing that. Creator, we have collaborations, we have ACE, Let's see here, Patreon, um, clients, I guess that's it. Okay, and here I can reorder this notebooks in a way that it is easier for me to access the information. I'm talking about prioritizing any container. I'm talking about ordering them in a way that makes sense to how I work. So I have discussions with clients all the time. Uh, a creator, I create content all the time. Collaborations, I'm always interacting. So by coincidence, it is <laughs> kind of the way I set my real account. Okay. The next step here, if you don't have it on, is to turn on the note count. If we go to the sidebar here, we can show note counts. And now I have an indicator of how many activities are going on inside each action container. So I know that I have one client in progress, five videos maybe that I'm working on, three collaborations going on, one meeting that I still have to do something uh, related to my uh, collaboration with Evernote and zero actions that I have to take regarding Patreon. As for the static containers, I only keep them in the notebooks list because although it's something that I need more often than not, it's not something that I need all the time like the action containers. I can quickly go to the notebooks uh, space or I can use a shortcut like Command J on Mac or Control Q on Windows to quickly jump to a notebook. And finally, I'll add the timeline to the shortcuts space because although it's not technically an action container, it is a space that I have to constantly move notes to it. So if I'm here uh, doing something as a creator and this video is already uh, completed, the work uh, I had to do on it, it's already completed, I can quickly move it to the timeline like this. If the timeline uh, notebook wasn't here, it would be much harder. I would have to click here and select a notebook and then move the note to that notebook. So let's simulate a real life scenario here. Let's say I uh, a new client contacted me. I'm gonna create a new note here. Let's call this Mr blue and I took notes about our conversation 
notes. I took my notes here. But because Evernote already adds the date and time these notes were taken, I don't have to do anything. It's going to go to the perfect place in the timeline when time comes to move it to the timeline. Okay, but inside the note, I keep a chronological order of what all my interactions with that client and all my interactions with anything that I do. And when I say interaction is not actual interaction, sometimes it's something with me. If I have an idea or if I want to try something on a video, I'll usually add the date when I have that idea and write something down. This here is a rough representation of the interactions I have with clients. It started with someone contacting me, and then we had some meetings, and finally it became a client. And like I explained it in the timeline system video, we can use Evernote's extra features, the ones that go beyond note taking, to help us. For example, I can add here a task. I don't know, contact him to know if he is interested in becoming a client. Let's say this was, I don't know, on the 15th, okay, three days ago. And instead of adding the dates like I'm doing here, let's go to this other client here. We could also add the calendar entry, the entry from the integration that Evernote has with Google Calendar and the Outlook Calendar. So since we are here, let's pretend that this client, I, I'm, I'm done with it. We did all the sessions, the, the, the consulting is complete. I can now move this client to the timeline and check the number of actions I still have. Here it is, and I now only have one note, one activity inside the client's notebook, inside the client container. Okay. Now let's say I need an information to help me with this client. I can go to the timeline, for example, and filter by library. This is how I tag the books I've read. So they, they are all here, not all, because again, this is my second account. And in my real account, there's even more books here, much more books here, but I can refine this. Let's click here because I know that this is related to Scrum. So as you can see here, it's already set to timeline. It's already set to the tag library, but let's add a word here, Scrum. The only two books that match that, the notebook, the tag, and the word are these ones here. And we can do this for anything. Let's say that let's clear this here, clear this here, and let's go back to the timeline. And let's say that Mr. Elephant, the client that we just added to the timeline, called me back and he wants, he needs more sessions. He's right here, but let's pretend he's not right at the top of the list. So let's do the same thing. I can do this, clients, because that note has the tag clients. And if that session ended recently, the note would be at the top of the list. Maybe I wouldn't even need to uh, refine the search, adding here the name Mr. Elephant. And many times the way I find this is not even using tags. It's only by adding the client's email to the search box because uh, I take notes and I add that information to the note. I add the name of the client, emails, and many other information that can help me find that note. So most of the times I'm usually just uh, pasting the email address of the client in the search box. But as you can see, there are many ways to get to the information. And as long as you add tags and other details to the note, there's no risk. The note's not gonna disappear in the timeline. And now that we found him, we can move him back to the client's container. And now I have two clients here, Mr. Elephant and Mr. Blue. And there's a new feature here that is helping a lot. I talked about it in this other video, but this notebooks, the 
actual notebooks, I set them, I order them by date updated. That means that because I did something to Mr. Elephant's note, it's now at the top of the list, even though it was created before this other node here. And this is really good for all the action containers because this is exactly what happens if we are doing something uh, with a node or about a topic, it's usually what we will need close to that situation in the, in the next few days or next few hours. And the nice part about having the action containers ordered this way is that if I, I don't know, have some interactions here with Mr. Blue, look, it now jumped to the top because this was the last note that I worked on on this notebook. And if we go to the timeline, this one here is ordered by date created. I build a system like this because I prefer to be proactive about the things I'm doing, the actions. So I can see here, clearly see how many activities I'm working on. I know that for some people this can be a little bit overwhelming. In this case, you can, for example, turn off the number of notes in the sidebar and use a dashboard. I use both, <laughs> I keep both, because I think it's uh, better to have multiple ways to get to the information. So here we have the calendar. Everything that is coming up is here. From here I can click uh, and go to a note, or I can go to the past and take a look at other notes, and even create a new calendar entry from here. Down below we have the tasks widget. I use the medium sized tasks widget because it gives me more information. And again, this is bringing, uh, showing me the information as a dashboard. It's capturing everything that I have in Evernote, just like the calendar does. So all the upcoming tasks, all my tasks have dates are here. And I can see the I don't know, the name, the description, whatever this is of the task. I can see the due date and I can see the note here. Not only I can see it, but if I need to, I can click here and go to that note. If I were using the uh, smaller size, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would only see this, of course, yeah, I can do it, but I have to click here, then here, and then go to no, too many clicks. <laughs> so let's go back to the medium size. Then I have here uh, my uh, documents, a list of all my documents. This links to each uh, document on a document note in my notebook. There's a video about this here if you want more details on how I build this. And by the way, this is something that I keep uh, inside the shortcuts, although it's not an action container, but I use it so much. It's a note here inside the family uh, notebook, which is where I keep all the documents, but I use it so much that I keep it here. Whoops. And I can simply click here and copy and paste a document. It's so easy. Then below I have another timeline help here. This is the notes widget which will show us everything that we just changed. It's a reverse chronological order of used notes. So let's go all the way back here. Let's find a note here. Maybe this one here, page 87. And let's just put a simple dot here. And if we go back to home now, there it is. It's, I just used this note. I know it's here. So when I need to look for something I was working on today or a few hours ago, a few minutes ago, I just click on home, scroll down, and I, I'm pretty sure I'll find it right here. The first notes uh, are the ones I, I, I just used. So as you can see, I use, many variations of a timeline, because this is usually how we create and consume information. So it's a more uh, intentional way 
of dealing with notes. Everything here is more intentional. I, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm not just consuming. I'm not just clipping, saving. I'm doing everything with intention and attention so I can easily go back to what I need if I need something from the past or from uh, uh, from now, from a client that I'm working now, I can just click here in the calendar, the tasks, a document, it's all here, intention and attention. This is just a walkthrough on how to set up the system, but Evernote has so many features that can help us find anything, quickly find anything, even in a simple setup like this one. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. Let's discuss this. Let's have a conversation about this. And of course, there are many other videos here on the channel where I discuss this and there are many others that will come up for sure. But uh, keep in mind that I like the idea of having a simple system with less steps and with information that I can extract from where the notes are from what I do on the system. Okay, <laughs> that's it for this one. If you think it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps a lot. If you want to help even more, please consider supporting me on Patreon or YouTube. You can also buy me a coffee. Thanks for watching. See you soon.